three, two. Good evening and welcome to the January 12th work session of the Penfield Town Board. I would like to call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. And would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'd just like to note for the record that all town board members are present this evening. We also have three department heads here. We have our town assessor, Chris Lyon, our director of developmental services, Carrie Ivers, and our director of planning and engineering, Mark Valentine. I keep wanting to say director of plan engineering. <laughs> That's what we call ourselves internally, so oh, okay. feel free. Well, <laughs> maybe for the work session, planning and engineering. <laughs> Okay, board members, you have the December 8th, 2021 board meeting minutes before you. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve these minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second them. And we have a first by uh, Councilperson Hockenden and a second by Councilperson Draw. Is there any discussion? Okay, um, rather than call a ro roll call vote, I would just like a vote of approval uh, and then I'll call abstentions or uh, nays, okay? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Candace? No. Okay. All right, so we're all in favor. And moving on to monthly reports, I am happy to report that most monthly reports are in. Um, if yours is still outstanding, you know who you are. <laughs> And you need to get that in by the end of this week. Thank you. Uh, our agenda calls for no public hearing meetings tonight. No public hearings tonight and we have no guests in the audience. So we'll move directly to action items. So starting with item A, um, Carrie, would you like to tee this up for us? I sure can. So John Antimasso, uh, acting on behalf of K2 um, Brewing, is looking at wanting to set up a public information meeting to explore potential for parking lot expansion on the parcel that's known as 41 Woodhaven Drive. I will note that on in previous communication with the board, this might have been noted as 41 Wilbur Tract. Um, the correct address is Woodhaven. So even though it's on a, it's on or off of the property that you, we all know is Wilbur Tract, that's the parcel address. Thank you for the clarification. Yep. So for anybody viewing at home, they can keep track of what this is. So the, um, Mark's uh, got the aerial imagery up up front. I know that um, months ago, maybe late fall or in the winter time, yep, the board did. members did take a, a, a physical walk through did. this area um, in light of the the new board members. Thought it'd be a good idea to maybe set up a time for um, any new members to, or at the, the board as an entirety to go uh, do that again and then set up an informational session um, at a future town board meeting so that you can get some public comment um, on the idea and, and hear um, the public's issues, concerns, thoughts, feelings about that potential project moving forward. This is located in the LaSalle's Landing uh, District, so this is a town board um, item for review. Thank you. Um, I know that yeah. this has been something that's been carried on. This is one of those carryover projects and I'm sure that the owners are definitely wanting to move forward. Um, that said, I'm new to the position, was not at the site visit and I know Candace was not either. Um, so it would seem prudent to just make sure that all the board members are on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, definitely to start getting uh, public feedback too and to set up a public information hearing as well. Um, are there any questions or comments for Carrie? Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing none, then um, I'd entertain a motion to have a schedule a site visit and also schedule a public information meeting for that community. I can pr prepare a resolution for the board's consideration at next week's meeting to um, 
to set that public information meeting. Um, and then as far as the site walk, I know that there's some notification that's required just to even announce when that's happening so that it's the public's aware of when this board's gonna be out as a body mm -hmm. doing that site walk. So we'll make sure that, that whatever notification is needed is taken care of as well. I'll work with all of you uh, via email to identify a date and time that makes sense for everyone. We're obviously trying to do daytime hours and right. this time of year that's uh, Very uh, limited. Yeah. Uh, it can be a limited time frame. So we can look at weekends as well. So. I've already indicated if that's amenable to you yep. as a board um, or we can find a time in the afternoon during the weekday. I'm fine with it if you send a doodle out, yep. you know, probably the people can respond to the doodle and you can see what works well. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Thank you so much. So I heard a motion from Councilperson Draw. Do uh, I have a second? I won't. Second. Okay. Second from Councilperson Cole. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Thank you so much. Our next agenda item, item B, is the townwide reevaluation. And I'd like to invite our town assessor, Chris Lyon, up to give an informational presentation to board members. Um, for the public watching, um, please know that we are um, really committed to being as transparent as possible with the reassessment process. I know probably people have gotten, uh, their back goes up a little bit when they hear the words, but uh, uh, we, we will do our best to be open, open and upfront, uh, transparent, and starting with this presentation right now. Hi, welcome all the new board members. I'm Chris Lyon, the town assessor, for those who haven't met me before. And I'm here to talk about the townwide reassessment coming up for this coming tax roll of 2022. Trying to not make it sound as scary as it right. may be to some people, so. Well, the first part we have, why is reassessment necessary? And regular reassessments make sure that the assessed values are in balance with each other. If we don't do that, some properties just go at higher values than other ones, so it may not be in balance anymore from what we have. And reassessment ensures uniform values. Here's a example from the state website where three properties 20 years ago, our last one was done in 2014, by the way, so. But here it's 20 years ago, they, they're all worth $100,000 and they've appreciated different rates. So one's worth at 300, one 200, and one's still at 100. Well, previously they're all paying equal taxes, netting $6,000. Now they pay different taxes, but still netting the $6,000. Can you explain that just a little bit further in terms of equity? Um, as far as the rates or? Right. Well, as, it seems to me you're talking about fairness, right? Yes. Okay. Because as the properties appreciate, everybody pays the same taxes. You know, there's, there's one pie, the levy that the town board needs for budget purposes. And your assessment is how what your little slice of that pie. And if we don't do do a reassessment, the state assigns us a rate, like this year we're at eighty five percent. So when we're say there's two school or Webster schools, there's side by side houses where uh, in the Penfield, they're paying $22 per thousand. In Webster, they're paying $26 per thousand for the same services, just because the state has assigned us different rates of assessment. Webster's been a little bit longer than we have, so they're at 72%. And you know, as that goes on, it gets worse and worse, and the changes get more dramatic when we do a reval to 100%. Okay, thank you. And is a reassessment required? It's not technically required by the state, but it is best practices to do that. And doing it here ensures the local control versus the state assigning us a rate and taking a broad brush and painting every property, which may apply to some, but others not so much. 
Can I ask one question, Chris? Yes. If um, if the state were to come in and do that in a in a, in a municipality, do you have any uh, uh, control? Are, are you we, a part we, of that? We are allowed to contest that rate they uh -huh. assign us, but generally they take it from sales within our tax roll. So unless there's some extenuating circumstances or some sales that shouldn't have been in there, there's not. It's not very defensible generally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Lyons, you said that it, it, the reassessment is not required by, by no, law. No, the, the state requires this to be at a equal rate of assessment. But this puts everybody at full value. And as far as the residents, it's a lot easier to explain when your house is assessed at 200000 but no, it's really worth $250,000. In this way, okay, we're putting it two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what we think the market price is for that as well. So I see in, in the presentation notes that it becomes a function of New York State. Can you just elaborate as in terms of what is the time in between, and is there a notice period that New York State would provide prior um, to? Well, to actually, that. that the revaluation happens every year when they assign us a rate. You know, okay. our current one of eighty-five percent. Previously, it was 87, the year before, 90%. So it has been going down Okay. as the role has been getting more out of balance. And what factors impact your assessed value? It's pretty much everything that will impact your market value. Your curb appeal, internal, internal characteristics that we're aware of, Supply and demand, of course, which is happening now somewhat. Desirability, you know, school districts sometimes, few sheds, just anything that says, somebody says, hey, I want to pay more for that house than the one over here, so. Okay, thank you. And how can I learn more? We do have a web page set up for this with a lot of the recent sales that people can browse through and there is state website links as well of how to value your, how you should value your house and then notices will be going on in mid february of any changes with additional information on the back of that notice of how to contact us and if you don't feel that that is a reasonable amount for your house And just, again, general information, penfield.org assessment. And we will be sending postcards out in the next week or so as far as, you know, just a general notice. And then formal notices will be going out in mid-February. We are not on island here. Other towns in the county are doing reassessments mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. Aranaquoit being one of the bigger ones. Yes. Chris, so a resident, once the resident gets that gets that letter in the mail, and they if they have a, a question or concern that they think their, you know, tax or assessment is too high or too low. No, we usually don't get the ones that are too low. So. <laughs> okay, they is there is, can they call you to chat to talk to you? Will you would you be a um, would is that be their first? The, yes, there there is the a process to set up process? for an appointment that okay. we will call them back. You know, once they have their information and we can research the property as well. Okay, great. Because these are not cast in stone, you know, we don't, we're looking at 12 to 13,000 properties here, so I'm first to admit, you know, we may miss one here and there. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Uh, I think Candace has a question. Yeah. So. Um, just speaking generally with the uh, supply and demand and that being a characteristic that affects assessments and with the last two years being anomalies in the real estate market and we've been kind of seeing this you know with the trending patterns of home sales and inflation being one of them for education purposes can you talk about how the reassessment of properties taking into account anomalies with home sales and COVID might be taken into consideration well I've I believe I sent in one of my reports the median value of properties since 2017. And 
2020 COVID was actually sort of a pause in that, but we're still going up on that, you know, we're catching up from what we missed. That's why we're seeing more of a rapid increase here. I know, I know it's, we're, our market is not accustomed to this, but we're sort of catching up with the rest of the country as well. But as far as a market anomaly right now, that is the market. And from what I've read, there's nothing save, you know, a steep in increase in interest rates that would slow it down. And I see it flattening out, maybe not going back down. But if that does happen, we are allowed to lower assessments as well. So I'm thinking more for the benefit of, of any viewers. So if on a block, if we take for example that a house might have sold 100 over the median price, taking an, an average of the last two to three years, then that's going to be an anomaly in the Yeah, the, the, there are always anomalies out there, both high and low. That's we usually use three or four sales to set our values on property. So, okay. you know, one, one, one sale does not make the market. Sure. Is our, you know, either direction. Okay. But we have seen, seen sales trending up, so. Right. So you're always looking at trends, basically. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions? And important reminders and... Wait, 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 I, don't, I oh. didn't see that one. Could you just go over that slide again? Okay. Re reassessments are conducted regularly in communities throughout New York State. Okay. Even though there are some places in Mid-Hudson that has, have not done it in 100 years. You know, <laughs> their rates are point of a percent. You know, it's ridiculous how, you know, $800,000 house will be valued at $800 for assessments and their tax rates reflect that, so. And property assessments is one of the factors used to determine your amount of property taxes, but that is just your portion of that levy, not directly. If your assessment goes up, your taxes may go up, they may not go up. Okay, so reassessment does not automatically mean that your taxes will increase. No, it will not. Okay. If you can as the example in the Webster School District, why we're paying $22 a thousand, they're paying 26. Whereas if we were both at 100%, we'd be paying somewhere about $19 per thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so there's not a direct correlation, but there is a correlation some. Okay. Nonetheless. And um, if people have questions, again, there's different ways. Uh, there's a lot of resources out on the website there are a lot of resources, actually a New York State website as well, yes. correct? Yes, and we're encouraging people to first look at the sales to see what, you know, it's by street right now so they can look at their neighborhood and say, hey, that, that house is sort of like mine, what did it sell for, even though most people do know what the immediate neighborhood houses are selling for, so. And if you still have questions um, and your questions are not answered online, then certainly you can call the assessor. Yes, but pl please wait until we send out the notices so you know. <laughs> okay. Not just calling, okay, what's my new assessment? Yeah. Because these, these will be sent out, so. Fair enough. Uh, the other thing that I would just mention is um, there are communities actually that outsource this and we do it in house, it actually saves uh, Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, the, of dollars. the name, uh, our consultant, I believe, is you know six or seven thousand dollars, and one of the neighboring communities is spending three hundred thousand oh. dollars. But they are their consultants are doing the hearings and everything. So, right. So we brought this in, -house. which sounds sort of attractive, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it is you know we we have the familiarity with the local market too. So. Well, maybe on grievance day, I'm sure you would under you would think about outsourcing. But okay, um, is there are there any other questions for Chris? Yeah, Chris, if you could, could you just elaborate on the timetable again? I know you said next month there'll be some kind of notice coming out. Like, just just for anybody who's listening, like when to expect 
what you know they'll know when their new assessment what their new assessment is and what's that uh, window to yep in, a, in a, about a week or so we'll be sending out postcards just notifying people who don't have to be tuned into the cable channel for us and then mid-February, we'll, we will send out the actual notices. They'll say, here's your previous assessment. Here's what your new value is. Then on the back will be a letter outlining the process to you know, set up a call with us to discuss it if they don't feel it is accurate representation of what their house is worth. And then how far through the year do they have to contest that, or when is that usually? Um, it's the fourth Tuesday in May is grievance day. So we'll probably go up, I think we right now are planning to go through mid-April for informal hearings. Then anything beyond that will help the residents fill out the grievance paperwork for the Board of Assessment Review. Okay. And anything that comes to my attention egregious prior to that can be done as a stipulation as well, which I sign off and then the board signs off on it, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Are there any other questions? Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We'll Thanks, move on to you. item C and, and uh, people can watch this presentation again. It will be rebroadcast and posted online as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to Rothfuss Park Field Expansion Update and Award, and Mr. Valentine is back. I'm back. Um, let me just exit out of this. Um, so this, we had originally bid out in February of last year. Uh, we'd gotten one bidder at that time. Um, seeing as how it was only one bidder, the board at that time uh, opted to uh, delay. Um, we were seeing excessive costs from COVID, lack of workers, um, trying to get uh, materials. So um, the board opted to wait until um, November of this year. So November 5th, we went up back out to bid. We did have nine bidders. Uh, we were below where we were in the spring. So that was a good option for that. <coughs> After that, we had one apparent low bidder. Had, had conversations with the low bidder, talked to them. Um, they're a small company, um, but subsequent to that, I have been unable to get into contact with them. Don't know what the situation is. Um, I've put in many uh, phone calls, sent emails, and then worked with the town attorney to ultimately send a, a certified letter, letting them know that the board would choose to move on um, should we not hear by December 30th. Um, so we had not heard, still have not heard anything from them. Um, so it's my recommendation this evening, and I shared with the board, uh, the other bidders, is to move on to the second bidder. Uh, so Pooler Enterprises is the second lowest bidder that uh, we had at that time. They are willing and able to still hold their bid um, and willing to move ahead. Um, but obviously they're looking to start scheduling things as we're looking. This is a early summer late spring, early summer to get it in and then get it established so that, you know, the best growing season is kind of that late August, September, October, you know, once you get it in to get the grass growing, it wouldn't be utilized this year, but then potentially could be a, a late summer 2023 at, at this point. But um, so just here this evening, seeing if the board is comfortable um, with moving ahead with Pooler Enterprises, if so, um, would put in a resolution, you know, to that effect and then would work with them and council to you know get the agreements in place and get that established and then you know move to do a notice of award to them to to move ahead and i also want to note that you did uh, talk with our town attorney about it when you could not reach the the first person yeah first and we've party. documented i've got documented the days okay. i've left messages called told them get back to us emails um so you know met with council so this has been going on since november 5th now we're at january 12th so um, I think we've given them, you know, enough time. And, and even then, we were reaching out to get references, you know, where they have their equipment, just to make sure they could do the job and do it appropriately for the town. So even without, or even if we get the information, we'd still do a vetting process, make sure, you know, they're able to do the job and, you know, make sure it's a quality, you know, product for the town. Pooler Enterprises is a known entity to us. We've done projects with them before. Um, we know we've, they've got the equipment. We, they know they've done similar projects. Um, I think they recently did some stuff for fields for Arondacoit. Um, so I think, you know, we're comfortable with, you know, with that company and, and 
awarding them the project, but just wanted to see, you know, what the board's consideration was. Sure. Are there any questions or further comments? Just one question. They, they do have a local office, correct? Yes. I thought they did. Yep. yep. Thank you. Mark, the f we started this last year, but the funding for this, the funding source hasn't changed any. It's it's, it's uh, coming out of the, the rec trust fund amount, um, rec trust fund account. So that was the same that was allocated last year. Um, we're under the bid where we were, you know, in the springtime. Right. So, um, and they've been willing to hold that price um, since Thank November. You. Pooler Enterprises? Pooler. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I can provide you the, the document that has the, the bid amount or the, the clerk's office has that as well. Council persons Cole or Lee, do you have any comments or questions? No. No. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to prepare a resolution uh, to, uh, how would I word this, award Pooler Enterprises? Yep. The, give them the notice of award of the, the bid award. and the... I'm sorry? Yeah, provide them the notice of award for the, the project and then oh, um, we'll work to get the agreement in place, but. Okay, did everyone get that? Yes. Great, and may I have a motion? I'll, I'll move that, Madam um, Supervisor, that we award Pooler this, um, the award for the, um, the fields at Rothfuss. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. All right, I have a motion by Councilperson Draw, second by Councilperson Ockenden. Are all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or nays? Okay, thank you. And can't leave yet. You have uh, item action item D, annual pond treatment review. Yeah, so this is something we've come um, before the board for, for several years now. Um, we've worked with ATIP is um, one of the only treatment companies we had in the area, but we do go out for annual quotes. Uh, from them, but we have areas and ponds in town as we spoke earlier that do need some treatment for excessive growth um, As we share and, and we've worked with the watershed committee put out to the public. We don't treat algae um, We don't you know do say pretty um, But we're working on functionality. So we've got some ponds that have either excessive cattail growth um, Some of these have duckweed in them. Some have have lily pads that that vegetation gets into the outfall structure, so if it's not treated, can plug it up, can cause a blockage um, issue concern with that. So we use um, a company that does those treatments for us. Um, we do have to get uh, necessary permitting, and that's why I'm here so early in the year. Through DEC, if we do any treatment in a pond, um, while not toxic, um, it does have to be held within the pond for a certain amount of time, and then we do notify downstream, so if anybody's doing any organic farming or anything in the area, sure. they're aware of it. So we do have to send out public notification. We send out all the proper um, postcards, so the neighbors on the stream in that area would get the postcard from us, tells it you know, what the treatment is, how long it's there, what needs to be done to um, you know, for that treatment. Um, they are certified, authorized, um, you know, specialists in that. And then we've also run it by the watershed committee. So typically in the late fall of the year, concur with that committee. Here's the ponds we want to treat. Here's the locations, the applications. That committee, you know, um, uh, certifies that or, you know, passes that recommendation onto the board. And then typically this time of the year, we come to the board, make sure you're comfortable with that, uh, doing that expenditure, you know, for those treatments. And then that authorizes them to go out. They've got to complete those applications to the DEC for those treatment areas, get that in. Um, the past couple of years, we were delayed a bit um, with the lakeshore flooding. We got our applications and later lakeshore flooding took precedent, so it pushed us late in the season and didn't get the stuff done. So that's why on a 20 degree day, we're here talking about ponds and stormwater yeah. treatment. <laughs> yeah. um, it's purposeful just so we get it in and get it into the, the DEC before it gets later in the season and then they're their permitting team is on to other things, so. Okay. Are there any questions about this, comments? Um, I see that it says review here, but I'm assuming that we need to take an action. Um, yeah, so basically it's, sorry, my review of the ponds, but an action for the board to say, yes, you authorize a tip to, you know, um, complete the contract and then, you know, go out on, on our behalf and do the treatment of the ponds. <laughs> do we need a resolution for that? Um, I didn't think we did, but... I don't think we typically do a resolution for that. Okay. It's more of the board's authorization, and then obviously we do a contract with them and have an agreement. Okay, great. Signed, but... All right, um, so is everyone in agreement that 
we can just move forward with that? Yes. Okay. Sure. All right. I think that was it. Um, oh. Wait, well, can I just ask one yes. question? Mark, and I, maybe I misunderstood. Is that for include all the ponds? Uh, we don't treat every pond. I know not all the ponds. The ponds that we need to treat, you yes. need to treat, right? Yep. And Through the watershed, this this is Absolutely. included in that. We use that, that group to vet that oh, out. So not every pond do we do right. treatment on. Um, again, so it's if, a, yeah, it's on a, uh, the sheet. Just the sheet. Yeah. Just yep. those people things. come in and say, we've got algae. We don't yep. treat algae. People say, you know, the pond's got, you know, different things. You know, we're not here to mm -hmm. make it crystal and clear, but it's just to kind of keep down that overgrowth of vegetation. It's that done could, for the year. That's a one shot. We'll... Yep, they go out and do the treatment. Typically, it's right. in a June season. They've got to wait for at least the lily pads. Right. Lily pads to come up. They add the, you know, the, the treatment of that that kills off the lily pads. Those, you know, sink to the bottom and um, takes care of that. But. Um, and I know I said, yeah, let's go ahead, but we probably should at least just <laughs> we may have a motion to proceed oh, with yeah. this. Oh yes, the motion with the board. And yeah. To do the. the uh, anyone would like to make that? I'll make a motion that we pr do this. <laughs> herbicide for this for these ponds thank you <laughs> that we move forward with treatment of the ponds, treatment of the yep. ponds yes second. okay i have a motion by councilperson draw second by councilperson cole all in favor aye. Aye. aye any abstentions or no nays okay thank you very much um request for item e is request for easement abandonment we actually have two items so we'll take them one at a time um, so this is, for the first one is for the Simutech property. So this is down on um, the Panorama Park development. So the new piece um, off of Panorama behind Popeye's going up the hill. Uh, so it's Parker Hill Lane. This, and I've just got a, a piece on the screen. So Simutech, and I can pull up an aerial photo as well, is a new building that went in. Um, the building is there and located. As part of their development, they needed additional parking. So the parking was located in this location here. That's where the original pond treatment was supposed to go. Since that was supposed to go there, we had, and we take an inspection easement over it, so it's not our pond, it's private, but we take an easement that gives us the right to go in and inspect it, make sure it's maintained, doesn't get filled in, um, so we've got the rights for that. Since they needed additional parking, that moved the pond, the infiltration basin treatment over we have the new easement, so the new easement is over and gives us the rights to inspect the new location. Now that leaves an easement in the middle of their parking lot that is no longer needed. So this board is the only board that can vote to abandon an easement. Um, so that's why it's before you tonight is to authorization to abandon that easement. We would then from here file the necessary paperwork, map and description uh, for the abandonment of that easement as it's no longer needed. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. Um, so I would entertain a motion that we prepare a resolution um, authorizing the easement abandonment. So moved. Second. Okay. Motioned by Councilperson Cole, second by Councilperson Lee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or negative? Nays? Okay. Great. And our second easement abandonment this evening. So similarly, um, this is for the Huddeman development. So this is a new um, four lot subdivision on the northwest corner of Jackson and Plank. You may see there's some equipment there if you've been by recently. So across from uh, Barry's Turkey Farm, there's some equipment there. They're working on uh, installing four new homes in there. This originally came to us years ago and I believe it was a seven or eight lot development at that time. They've filed the mapping, they've filed the easements. Now they've come back. It's a four lot development, so less homes, um, but obviously reducing the lot number, change the configuration so the map that was filed for the easement over around the pond no longer matches. So again, we now have an easement over an area that's not quite the same. We have a new easement. We have the new paperwork filed for the new pond so that we no longer need the inspection easement rights that were granted back in the day for that. So again, similarly, just looking to abandon the easement that's no longer needed. Mm -hmm. We have the easement in place and is already filed for the, the new area. So this is uh, the proposed easement. You can dash in here. The old easement is over here. So it's, you can just see it's a slightly different configuration from what's there. So again, looking for the board to authorize the abandonment of that if you're 
Comparable. So second verse, same as the first. Yep. Um, do I have a motion to um, authorize a resolution um, for an easement abandonment? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilperson Lee, second by Councilperson Ockenden. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? All right, great. Um, next one is an application. Sure, oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Take your time. Ooh, geez. And I'm not, you okay? Not yep, no, that was my, sounded worse than it was. Okay. <laughs> I'm making quite the entrance. Um, I apologize. No, no, you're fine. Um, this is an application to renovate the former Daisy Flour Mill at 1880 Blossom Road uh, for conversion to a microbrewery production and tap room. Correct. Please. So this is an application that's coming in. It's a historic district, which is why it's the town board's purview. The um, applicant has already been before the Historic Preservation Board. Uh, the Historic Preservation, Preservation Board is holding um, any uh, determination uh, or issuing the appropriate the certificate of, appro of appropriateness until the town board has taken action. Um, they are not proposing any significant exterior changes besides paint and um, repairs that may be needed. There will be some interior renovation um, associated with the um, retrofitting it for the use as intended. Uh, the ballroom um, of, the, of the property would be retrofitted to be the production area um, for the microbrewery and then the restaurant area would be uh, repurposed as the tap room. Um, they obviously will be working with the building department and co-compliance co related to that. They're not proposing any significant site changes. They're looking at doing some basic cleanup um, of the property, no changes to curb cut. Um, and so what we'd be looking at is, um, and I'm, I'll pull it up, the application's fairly straightforward. I, um, you know, as far as the, um, of, you know, because it's mostly an interior renovation, there's not much to see. So I'd be making a, re a recommendation for a resolution to set the public hearing to uh, hear this uh, matter. Um, and a, at, at the next available meeting, I believe would be February 16th. Um, we already have um, submitted for Monroe County referral um, and we'll, we anticipate having the uh, response back in advance of that date. Okay, great. Um, any questions for Carrie? Mm -hmm. And the name of the brewery, just for reference, is Rising Storm. And the lo this location, there's already a Rising Storm brewery, so this would be Rising Storm at the mill, is what they're going with. Yeah. So a little, a little nod to the Daisy Flower Mill. Mm -hmm. Excellent, okay. Um, may I have a motion to have, uh, set a resolution to set a public hearing? So moved. Second. Um, I <laughs> have a motion by Councilperson Cole and a second by Councilperson Lee. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or nays? Okay. Thank you. And our next item is a rezoning application for 1345 Shoecraft Road. 933 State Road, 1177, and 1179 Bay Road. So I'll apologize. I could have broken this up into three separate um, lines, but essentially these are applications that have been sort of out there in consideration in various forms with my predecessor. Um, they decided that because there was new board members coming in, it didn't make sense to start the process and then have it carry over, have board change. So the applicants knew that and they knew they were holding. Um, so the first one is um, 1345 um, Shootcraft. I'm going to open up the application and sort of awkwardly scroll down to Bear with me for a moment. Um, actually, what I should have done was have this ready to go in a map, and I don't. This will give you a sort of a sense of the the parcel, and I'll I'll bring it up in. Um, and this might be where. Hmm. I'm sure it's. Bear with me. I'm so sorry. 
-hmm. I'll bring it up here so we can see it. So this is, and I'll, I'll, it blocks it for a moment, so I'm gonna, you'll identify it. This here is 1345. Um, it's currently zoned RR1. The request is to have it be zoned um, R120, which would be consistent, and I can certainly turn the zoning uh, layer on. That might be helpful for everybody to see sort of what's happening around these parcels. Um, so the non-colored one, the ones with, that are clear are the R120. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see the 1345 um, shoe craft. Note 933 is right in the same general vicinity, but has uh, the state road address. Um, and the 1345 uh, shoe craft is being based on this little entryway here, and I hope you all can see me moving my cursor around. Um, and so they're requesting um, the, the, the rezone. One of the things to think about, and certainly um, this board's consideration, these other parcels uh, currently are non-conforming in the RR1 mm -hmm. district. They are more in line with R120. And so the thought might be, should we, if, if the board is amenable to moving forward with 1345 and 933, um, the, they would, would we entertain or at least make available the option for these other parcels to um, be included in that rezoning? Um, so the question would be, you know, in terms of, are you amenable to this? Is this something that you're in favor of? With this particular application at 1345, they are looking at um, p p potential development, maybe cluster-like development. And Mark, you might have some background information on this as well, with earlier conversations with with from with Jim. Yeah. So um, they're looking at the possibility of doing. Uh, Town Lot 278 doing some um, duplex units. So they would, if rezoned to R120, that's our half acre zoning, they would do a conventional layout. Um, that would be before the planning board. So they do a conventional layout, show how many units they can get on that acreage, and then show in a 278 that if they could you know, cluster those and do duplex units that could preserve some more treat areas, keep some more green space open, under 278, they don't get any additional lots, so I don't know a number, I'm just saying 10. Um, but if they show in the conventional plan, they get 10 units under 278, you can show if there's a benefit to cluster them, you have the units closer together, preserve more open space, preserve more tree areas, you're still at 10 units. So I don't know that's the number, I just you know yeah. put that out there, but that's right. what they're requesting. So this right. is you know to set a public hearing, uh, open it up, put it out to the public. I know the developer had some initial conversations with the neighbors. He has sent uh, information out to them, welcomed them to look at his thought and his plan. Um, and as Gary had shared, this has already uh, gone before the um, Comprehensive Plan Committee. This committee looked at it and recommended that uh, it be considered for rezoning. So, okay. so he, did, he did meet with? Really did yes. meet with the uh, yep. he sent the out, last thing we heard because we did talk about this a lot last year. He sent out and postcards and the I don't last know thing he was going to meet with them. I don't know if he's met with every neighbor, but I know he did share what he had um, there, um, you know, with them and shared what his thoughts were. I know there uh, some neighbors, you know, had concerns about drainage, and I think through development they could add some drainage structures, add a pond, mm -hmm. do some things that you know could help with you know the existing drainage that's out there now. And so, just to be clear, this would be the, the first step would be putting the zoning in place that would allow for the R120 development. So that's the first step. Um, subsequent development would be tasked through other other boards. Um, the and then just in speaking with Jim, as we made the you know the. Uh, you know the changing of the guard. He mentioned the idea of the other parcels potentially reaching out to them if we were, if the board were amenable and wanted to move forward, to also um, give them the opportunity to be included or to make the uh, at your discretion to decide. Let's make it all consistent in this triangle, so that it matches what's already happening along Shoecraft and um, and and Plank Road. You know the the the. the um, these are all R120. Right. Go ahead. 
Were you going to say something? No. Oh, so, no. okay. And there, the comprehensive plan oh. committee does have a memo. Um, it was being finalized, um, and so I don't have it in my possession, but I certainly will share that. I expect that in the next day or two. Okay. And they were in favor of the rezone. Go ahead. So last time when we heard, when we did, Linda's correct, we did uh, hear a little bit about this last um, year. Um, it, this, Mr. Neufeld, is this the property still Mark or Kelly that he's talking about doing the greenhouse on? That's still? in the upper corner, so to the northeast of that 930, 943, excuse me, it's um, just to the left, Carrie. So that's the, okay. yep, that piece right there he was talking about right. possibly doing a, a greenhouse in that corner of it. Okay. Um, it would still fall under that R120 zoning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can do... Um, Healthcare. There are some other right. uh, items that can be done on the R120 that would fall into so that. Still talking about that piece in there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's such an unusual size, you know, shaped yeah. piece of property. Um, so I can understand why he would want to do that, and also, again, preserve open space as much as possible. Um, any other questions for Mark or Carrie? Yeah, I would say that um, we should I would entertain a motion to uh, have a resolution to set a public hearing. I, I move that we set a public hearing for these three properties, if all three property want to be included in this. Okay. So we can set the, we can set the public hearing for the two applications that we have. Yes. Um, I can certainly in the meantime reach out to the other property owners to determine whether or not they would like to be included in that e effort. Right. I don't think we could do anything without talking to them. Exactly. Right. And you wouldn't want, you couldn't, well, I, I, yes, I mean, I think legally you would have that ability. Right. Um, I think practically that might not be the, <laughs> may not be the best approach without no. informing right. folks, but I will reach out. But we can make, I mean, the motion to do all three if the third one wants to participate. So it's out there. And if they don't want to participate, it doesn't matter. I mean, we can go along and have the public hearing on the two. That's fine. That's fine. I'll second that. That's okay. Fine. A motion by Councilperson Cole and a second by Councilperson Draw. All in favor? Aye. 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 And no nays or abstentions. Okay, so that's the first two of the my list of many uh, rezoning applications. And I'll pull up the next one. will be a little bit easier to see. Um, both on street view as well, and I'm a little bit better prepared for that one this time. So this is 1177 and 1179 um, Bay Road. You're just you know, just to orient yourself. Um, you're this is Wegmans. You're just we're just inside the the town limits here. Um, a minute a minute north, and you're we're out in Webster. Um, so the, the two properties in question is 1179, which is a um, pre-existing non-conforming two-family home. Um, it's zoned R1. The um, property um, just to the north is 1177. They're owned by the same individuals. Um, they're requesting the zoning from R120 to MR to multi-residential to bring the existing um, parcel with the two-family into conformance and also create the opportunity to build something very similar and, and like-minded to that, to that property, potentially. Um, this is another um, item that was reviewed by the Comprehensive Plan Committee, so I'll be providing that memo to, to the board uh, for your consideration. Um, the, um, I'll provide this to, so you can see it from a street view. This is what it looks like. Um, it's, uh, it is currently a two-family, and this is the parcel uh, located next door. And so the, the rezoning itself would just bring the existing structure into conformance and would allow an opportunity for something similar to happen next door. And just to reiterate, this is at the request of the property owner? Correct. Okay. Yeah, this is at the request of the, uh, the property owner. It was reviewed by the Comprehensive Plan Committee. Um, I'll provide that memo. And again, we'd be looking at potentially setting up the public hearing to uh, consider this rezoning application. Okay. Any questions, comments? Hi. In re reviewing the 
um, application for the amendment, I noticed that there are two sections left blank on the application with respect to potential impact to neighbors. Is there any? Go yeah, so, and I apologize, often when um, the, the applications were in our possession, I, w I didn't work with the applicant directly to, Okay. so what we can do is make sure that they complete that, um, they can provide an email to fill in those blanks so that this board has that information. I'll, I can ask them to do that um, in short order okay. so that we're not, um, we can have that information at right. your disposal. We'll need that completed. Yeah. Right. Okay. The public hearing obviously will give the neighbors opportunity. Right. They'll yeah. come out and share Let's what see. impacts right. they believe that there is if, if they're next door or nearby. So that'll give this board opportunity to hear what the, the neighbors' concerns are. The other issue or the other, and related to that matter, would be this would be an unlisted action for the purposes of seeker rezoning uh, the, based on the acreage and the amount of space. It's an unlisted action, but seeker would need to be done. So that's one of the things we'd be looking at as part of this action is what does this rezoning do to the neighborhood, to char neighbor, the characteristics, the the views, you know, just in general, you'd be impact on land use. So it those kinds out. of things would be addressed either way. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll move to set a public hearing for this. Could I have a second? Well, oh. One of us makes the motion. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. She's excited. getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'll entertain a motion then. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right. I have a motion by Councilperson Ockenden, seconded by Councilperson Draw. All in favor? Aye. Any aye? Any abstentions or nays? No, ma'am. Okay. Great. So I, I'm, I'll stay at the mic here since the next item for I was informational say, items. We're moving on to informational items. We've completed our action items, um, and you do have an item on the agenda. So I, um, I thought, and if the board is comfortable with this, that periodically I would add to the informational items information about new businesses that are coming to town in various you know, stages, like whether that's pre-development, whether it's they're under construction, um, just so that you're aware you can't be everywhere all the time. I can't either, but we have lots of information at our, at our disposal in our offices, so I thought this might be a good practice if this is something that you would be interested in? Absolutely. Very much so. Okay. Um, as you may or may not know, um, 1838, uh, the Chipotle um, is uh, is open. They have their, um, their, their, they did sort of a soft opening. We did make the connection between the project developer and the um, Penfield Chamber, so I'm hopeful that they'll coordinate some type of a formal welcome to the town event. I don't want to call it a ribbon cutting, cause, because, but something to that effect. A grand opening. A grand opening, yes, grand opening would be wonderful. Um, so that's exciting. I think that's a, a really great project to highlight because it's an adaptive reuse of a formerly, you know, the, the M&T building. So anytime you see a project where uh, an old building is brought to life, that's really exciting to see. Um, and I think that um, we're, you know, as as time goes on and the the buildings in the town of Irondequoit, some of them might start to reach their term life. You're going to see some opportunities for refreshing those those commercial spaces. Town of Penfield, and say you, you said Irondequoit. Oh God! <laughs> it's all right. You will. Oh dear. Well, I was there for almost eight years. Yeah. That was bound to happen. I am so glad that I, I didn't. Um, well, I haven't answered the phone yet um, that way, so that's be <laughs> beneficial. Oh dear. All right. Well, if it's any consolation, for... I just thought I was at the zoning board. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That was awful, but okay. No, it's fine. Moving, it's fine. moving on. So we have a couple of. Um, uh, so we've got a couple of um, new businesses coming into the Four Corners. Some uh, administrative conditional use permits were issued for a new um, licensed massage therapy office. And there's actually a law office that's relocating into the Four Corners as well. I don't think either one of them have opened yet. I, their conditional use permits have been issued and they're making um, their efforts to get themselves up and, up and running in those locations. 
Um, but as and obviously there is the Burger King that's under construction um, and that's moving along nicely over on um, Fairport Nime. I always want to call it 250. Yeah. That's just a shortened way of saying it. We call it 250. We call it 250. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll try to update you with at least a handful of uh, business updates as we go along. I think the board finds this very helpful yes. um, because we can't be everywhere at once. So it's really nice to hear what's coming and going. Okay. Hopefully just coming. Yes. <laughs> right. Perfect. Okay. Out of curiosity, what's the law office that's coming into Four Corners? It's Vigneri, um, V-I-G-N-E-R-I, um, law, of, law offices, I believe. I think they're located currently in Brighton. I Perhaps. think so. I think, I think that's what she had indicated. Yeah, the, yeah. They're the ones going into Wally's yeah. old Right. Yeah. It was, it's an national Wally office Ashton building. The four corners. It's like next to the art stop. It's this oh, little yeah, tiny yeah. Law office yeah. area. And yeah. actually, you can see the hearing on it. Uh, I think it was December 8th or something. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Is there anything else? Uh, I think, Mark, you, we just talked about this. Yeah, so Simply Crepes, I believe they, they started construction. Uh, we're approved by the planning board. We're moving along. There was some issues that I heard between the owner and the lessor. It kind of went on pause for a little bit, but last I heard, it's back on track. So I think their opening date is, is delayed, but I believe they're back in action, and, and we've seen action at the building that they're continuing con con Good. with construction. So. There was a pause in the middle. It's a there nice was looking building. There was some stuff going on. Work had stopped, but um, it's our understanding that whatever issue it was is worked out, and now they're back on track. So, hopefully, we'll hear that they'll be open opening soon. Great, thank you again, and thank you for your help this evening. Also, thank you to the PCTV crew downstairs. Um, I don't believe we have any old business. Is there any new business? Okay, um, we, our next work session meeting will be January 26th, right back here uh, at 7 p.m. And I would like to uh, have entertain a motion to move into executive session to discuss <coughs> personnel matter. That's your motion. Oh, okay. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. You have to call the meeting? Um, I was gonna call it after we voted. Right. Okay. Um, so, Okay, to move into executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And then this this part of the meeting will stand adjourned at 7:57 p.m. <laughs>